Hey everybody, welcome to our first Breaking the Plane podcast. I've got Dustin here with me, and we're going to be getting into the best quarterbacks in the league today and doing a fun little exercise. We're going to have a fantasy draft and put all quarterbacks out there as free agents, and we're going to take turns picking one by one as we get all the way through. Uh, just some parameters for this. We are going to just do one quarterback per team. So many teams have quarterback controversies. What we did in cases where there's a veteran and there's a new quarterback being drafted, unless that quarterback is already slated to start week one, that's just Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels. In, the, uh, in any other case, we did the starter as the veteran that's on the roster. So Sam Darnold for the Big Vikings, idea. uh Jacoby Brissett for the Patriots, and I'm forgetting one. Who else we got? Uh it's Gardner Minshew on the Raiders. Gardner Minshew on the Raiders and uh Zach Wilson for the Broncos. So with that being said, we're gonna kick this off and Dustin and I were talking about, hey, who should pick first? Or you know, we're gonna go back and forth, trade off picks. We thought that no one wanted to pick number one because we just both agree Patrick Mahomes is far and away the best quarterback. There's not really much to talk about that. So we're just going to go ahead. Patrick Mahomes takes the number one slot, and then we're going to go back and forth after that. Um, I'm doing this on the spot. We're going to make this uh, so we get the equal number of picks. We're going to do the top 33 quarterbacks, though. So Mahomes is off the board. You'll start us off with pick two. But I'm also going to get a pick 33 at the end. Okay. So I get to get my full 16 picks. And okay. I'll use that for whoever I deem to be the best backup quarterback in this league. Interesting. So, Mahomes off the board. 31 other quarterbacks you can pick. Go. I think I take Lamar Jackson. I know there's a Ooh, lot of... Going action Jackson. Yeah. little recency could, bias could, for the MVP? No, what? no. I think you could argue Joe Burrow, but one, Joe Burrow doesn't stay healthy that often. And two, I think there's just something about the dynamic playmaking of Lamar Jackson that just makes him such a valuable asset. And he has improved in the passing game. So I think that you take Lamar Jackson here. Would you take Lamar Jackson last season or 2019 Lamar Jackson? Um... I'd almost argue last season. Why would you take last season over that? Uh, he put up bigger numbers in 2019. He did put up bigger numbers, but I feel like he failed in the spotlight a bit more. I feel like there were some of the more coming-of-age victories for him this year, so I I would go with Lamar Jackson, even though he, does, he still struggles in the playoffs a little bit. Can't quite get over the uh, – Mahomes hump when it matters. Yeah, so I'm a big Lamar Jackson guy. I don't have him at number two. That's a little aggressive. Uh, I would have probably put him at three, but there's no way he's going ahead of my guy who's going at number three, and I'm getting a steal because the second best quarterback in the league, Joe Burrow, is falling to me at number three. And here's why he's better than Lamar Jackson. He has the clutch gene. He's great in the playoffs. He's the only one that's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Patrick Mahomes in a game outside the Super Bowl in the playoffs and won, unless their name is Tom Brady. Brady's done it twice. Uh, but that was a huge game. And in the regular season, the Bengals have beat them. And the, when they lost in the AFC Championship game, it was super close. Very tight game. So Joe Burrow has ice in his veins. He's going to get it done. He's got great weapons to work with. And, the, and what sets Burrow apart, he went to a franchise, the Bengals, who were so bad. For so long and instantly made them competitive being a jaguars fan that's what i was hoping trevor was going to do for the jags they've been bad for so long just need that great quarterback to come in and give the spark trevor's done some good things but he's not on that burrow level where you come in and just elevate right away super bowl in year two hard to argue against that so burrow coming in my second pick and at number three so who are you taking as we move to number four yeah i'm trying to think here because Plenty of options. A lot of people would go Josh Allen here. Right, yeah. and like Some people the, like C.J. Stroud. The, the talent is, it's, Stroud needs to show me a second season before I go Stroud. You could be in Jalen Hurts. This time I'm last not, year, I'm, everyone was saying Jalen Hurts. I'm not a Jalen Hurts fan. Okay. I think Jalen Hurts is a product of his system. And when you Whoa, see, when really? You, well, when you see that they lost their offensive coordinator, Shane Steichen, he, his production plummeted. I mean, you take away the tush push, then he's – got a lot less rushing touchdowns there so yeah um yeah that's kind of where i'm at with that well um, you're on the clock at four i know i know you disagree with this but i would probably go uh i would probably go herbert you'd go herbert at four yeah oh i'm glad i'm drafting against you because <laughs> he doesn't crack my top 10 right yeah well i mean 
I think that he definitely has the arm talent and like he the Chargers they are going to Charger but I feel like a lot of that wasn't Herbert's fault and this last year he was injured so you can't really put that on him so how's I, how's Herbert been in the playoffs well he had the one against the Jaguars like How'd that game turn out? Well, he did play great in the first half, <laughs> and then the Chargers chargered, and that happens. So, so what do you? I mean, four is a very high ranking here. I mean, but yeah, what, tell me about the impact of Jim Harbaugh or, coming in. Sorry, what, what's the impact of Jim Harbaugh coming in? Does that impact your? I ranking think at all? Jim Harbaugh will stabilize the team. Um, so they're going to focus a lot more on the run with him, and I mean, if he can, it, it, I think it's going to be telling with Herbert this year because he did lose all of his receiver talent. So right. if Herbert does perform well with no-name receivers, then, yeah, I think you have to make the case. I think he's had weapons and has just been okay. Mm. And it's he's been underwhelming. Okay. I'd take Trevor. I would hands down take Trevor over Herbert. I don't take Trevor over him. Wow. That's Trevor, absolutely Trevor, crazy. Trevor – just runs and drops the ball. He did it twice last rain season. Rain is difficult for Not Trevor. Rain. It's really, no. it's really tough. The yeah. Oh, tough. it's so tough for Trevor to hold on to the ball <laughs> as a professional athlete. Yes. Um, Not even hit, folks. Baltimore Ravens running to the sideline just drops the ball. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. It's true. Um, so you're going Herbert at four. Um, I'll do Josh Allen to round out the top five. That's about where I think Josh Allen falls. Um, I was I was tempted to uh, yeah, Josh Allen over. Uh, Josh Allen's solid athlete, and um, I feel very <laughs> similarly about Josh Allen as I do about Lamar Jackson. I don't see either of them winning titles. I don't think it's going to happen. The Ravens probably have a better chance. Um, mm. They're just a better run organization. Well, the, the Bills always find some way to mess it up in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, and I, I think the Wide Bills... Wide right against the, the Chiefs this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but funny side note, Dustin and I are watching the game together, and I was like, it's going to go wide right. I just know it. It was going <laughs> to be a Scott. You did no- say that. I knew it was going to be a Scott Norwood moment, and whoop, there it goes. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, so I'll take Josh Allen here. Uh, I liked him in the 2018 draft, although I don't go around bragging about my 2018 QB draft analysis <laughs> because I had Josh Rosen at number one and Josh mm-hmm. Allen at number two. But I, I, I went on that hype train with you. Yeah, but. I was big on Rosen. Um, but yeah, I think uh, this is the spot where Josh Allen falls, and right at, right at number five is where he should be. All right, that takes it to you at number six. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking like through the teams and whatnot, and I think I do take Stroud here. Whoa, we are so far off. <laughs> I think Stroud well, and, and I'm, I'm taking, the pan rookie. I'm, here. I'm taking into account that. They're young and have longevity. I'm not just saying who's the best quarterback right now in this instant. If I'm drafting them and I want them yeah. for the future, I think Stroud has a bright future. And I know I said I needed to see another season, but I was kind of like between Stroud or Lawrence here, and wow, Lawrence hasn't even had a season close to Stroud's yet. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you, you and I think Stroud sure. had a lot less. And and here's kind of what I see with yeah. that. Um, Nico Collins. Was, okay, that's a good point. Yeah, Nico Collins did nothing for the first two seasons. Then I was actually big on him. I drafted him in a lot of my dynasty fantasy leagues. Yeah, because I had heard good things about him potentially coming out as a later round draft pick. Stash him away. He might be good. And just never really clicked. And then last year, he's, like, amazing with C.J. Stroud. So I think that there's a lot of potential there. And it's like, he didn't, like, when we were trying to talk, and maybe I'm a little biased because of the whole Panthers drafting Bryce Young. Dustin's a big Panthers fan, for those who are new to Dustin. Yeah. And the whole argument was, oh, well, Stroud didn't have a supporting cast around him. He lifted up the players around him. And that's what you want to see in a quarterback. And kind of like you were saying earlier, you were expecting Trevor Lawrence to do that, and he hasn't. Yeah. Uh, I need more sample size from C.J. Stroud. I, I agree. I need more sample size. I was not big on him coming out of college. I'm, and I, I agree. I was kind of concerned about the whole Ohio State thing, which is why I actually wanted the Panthers not to draft him. Yeah. But um, I, full disclosure, I wanted them to draft Anthony Richardson. I did not want them to draft Bryce Young because I felt like that was the safe pick. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 
I, I'm thinking with like potential going forward, I would put Stroud here. Okay, so you're taking Stroud at six. That leaves me at seven, and I, this is really what it's turning into. Dust is you're you're like in the up and comers, and I like the veteran proven. Are you going to say Aaron Rodgers, Matt Stafford? Okay, I, I Matt can... Stafford at number seven. I just don't like many of the NFC quarterbacks. So Stafford showed me something different last year. The Rams weren't expected to do anything, and they showed so much grit. Mm. They weren't supposed to make the playoffs. Well, then you, you got to give it to Stafford. Like, grit yeah. has been a part of his game his entire career. I right. mean, heck, he threw a touchdown with a separated shoulder to win the game. So Remember the uh, Cowboys game where he just, like, went over the top yep. two at the end? Like, yeah. he, he's gutsy. Uh, Stafford's, Stafford's a good player. So uh, he was throwing with arm angles way before Patrick Mahomes was. He was the yeah. first one to start doing that. And everyone used to criticize Stafford for his old uh, – sidearm throws and everything and now that's that's in vogue that's what everybody's doing but <laughs> Stad- stafford's a tactician uh he's professional and i think he's got a fire to win one more okay. and he he goes into a different echelon if he gets a second ring. yeah if he gets a second ring i think that that's fair to say because i i kind of i think matt stafford is a little bit of a recency bias thing though because he went on the rams and won the super bowl and mm-hmm. has played pretty good with the rams but did he ever lift the Lions past the wild card? No. Nothing to work with. Agreed. Well, he had Megatron. Like, Not much support anywhere else sure. on the team. And I'll it's the reason you. he retired so early. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. But I still feel like we view Matthew Stafford in a higher regard now yep. because of what he's done recently. Uh, I I think that's just part of his career, though. So, yeah, winning a Super Bowl, that's going to move you up in my rankings. And then late stage of your career, because, you know, they had the bad season after the Super Bowl. Yeah. Super Bowl hangover. Which, the that, it's funny, because when they were expected to be good, yeah. they were bad. Right. But then last year, when they had no expectations, they were good. They're well coached. So, I, uh, yeah, so the, the, what he did with very little expectations, um, how he brought along Puka Nakua and yeah. turned him into a monster. And I, I, Stafford's a really good quarterback. And you're right. I Now, I like Stafford on the Lions. I consistently ranked him in my top 10, but he was around 10. I also think we had better quarterbacks around that time in the early. 2010s we had some great yeah. quarterbacks i mean you around that time you were talking about people like philip rivers and tony romo ranked around like maybe 15 to 18 those guys would be top 10 in the league today yeah so romo maybe not philip rivers i'd agree they both i think they both would be yeah. so um because if they were in their primes i'd have them ahead of matt stafford on this list both of them okay yeah definitely so you are on the clock for number eight. All right, so I know I was bashing Trevor Lawrence a lot with the C.J. Stroud uh, pick, but yeah. I think it makes sense to put Lawrence here. Okay. Um, Why is that? I think that while he hasn't quite lived up to, like, franchise savior expectations, I think he's still doing, like, a good job. He does not have, like, a big superstar on his team. I mean, who's his top receiver? Christian Kirk. Yes, and now Kevin, Evan, Calvin Ridley's gone. Well, yeah. Cal- and even Calvin Ridley, it just didn't seem like he quite fit into the scheme. They weren't using him right. Um, he dropped a ton of passes, he did too. Drop, he did drop that. passes. Lawrence did overthrow him on that one against the Titans. That would have gotten them close, but I digress on that one. Only, yeah. only with the playoffs on the line, whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I especially with that comeback against the Chargers in the playoffs, that showed a different level of, okay, Putting things together, putting a really and we tough were situa- there. We were there. Yeah, that was probably the best game we've ever been to. Right? Oh, yeah, by yeah, far. Easily. And and I was like, we were, you were miserable, oh. like close into halftime, twenty-seven to nothing. Yeah, and I was like, was hey, scary. Dylan, wouldn't it be just the best game if they somehow came back and won this? And then Evan Ingram got that touchdown yeah, right it, before half. Right before half, that was yep. that was big. Yeah, yeah. but I, I guess. It is very difficult as a quarterback in that situation because, I mean, four interceptions in the first half, 
you're talking Nathan Pe- Nathan Peterman. Like, yeah, and yeah. and that's five interceptions. Like, like you normally would think just mathematically, like okay, well we you know we got destroyed in the first half, so we just got to turn around and destroy them in the second half and even right. score. That's not how it works because your strategy changes. Right, you're down four scores. They're just gonna try to run out the clock for the entire second half. Right, you won't have enough time. It takes them making some mistakes, which they did, mm-hmm. which is why Herbert should not be four on your <laughs> rankings. So. Yeah. yeah, so you're going Trevor, and I think that's the right spot for Trevor. Yeah. Trevor, in my mind, is top 10, back half of the top 10. So, so as we're moving to number 9, you're going to hate this pick. I know you're going to put Aaron Rodgers. It's Aaron Rodgers. Uh. Aaron Rodgers is a top 10 quarterback he, he, in the NFL. Why is this such a hard thing to believe? He's declined in recent years. Oh, oh he couldn't play on a torn Achilles no, tendon. No, I'm not talking about that. The prior year for the Packers, he did not play well. Okay. He coming off two MVPs right before then. Sure. And he didn't win three MVPs in a row. That's correct. He did not. He did not. Yeah. But then he just kind of got way too like in the public space and I feel like that's just kind of taken his mind out of the game a bit. I, I personally I, There's like, universe I, the Jets win the Super Bowl. This I year. no, no. They're definitely a They are not winning this, the Super Bowl. Their this roster year. is so Talented. Sure, but did Rogers you see how bad it okay. performed without a quarterback? They got seven wins. Yeah, they got those, seven wins. At the end they, of the season. they beat the greatly touted Josh Allen Buffalo Bills on opening night with Zach Wilson. Well, yeah, I think that was... This defense is phenomenal. Yeah. So no, Gardner's I'll, I'll the best you, corner in the league. I'll give you the defense. Yeah. Phenomenal. So, uh, Jets, uh, I'm flirting with making the Jets a playoff team, and Aaron Rodgers is definitely in my top ten coming in at number They're two. not going to make the playoffs. All right, who's at ten then? <laughs> Who you All got right, at ten? who's at ten? Hmm. Could be Jordan Love character. Oh, Brock Purdy, right? The MVP. No, no, no. I don't oh, believe Brock, in Brock. Where's Brock going? Brock, Brock Purdy is very much like a number 15 to me. Like, he's right at the average. He's a, I would almost put him a little less than Kirk Cousins, honestly. So that's, okay. that's kind of what Kirk Cousins is my barometer for, like, a little bit above average. And Brock Purdy's below that. Brock Purdy yeah. is a product of his system and the talent around him. I used to have Kirk Cousins as, like, the new Alex Smith, but... Uh, Alex I Smith th- was more mobile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think Kirk Cousins is better than Alex Smith was at his peak. I think, so. yeah, I think Kirk Cousins' pocket-passing skills are better than Alex Smith. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of torn between Rounding a couple of, yeah. couple of choices... You got Jordan Love I'm, still out there, Kyler I, Murray. It's, I think it's Jordan Love it's for me. It's Jordan Love. Yeah, so it's like it's kind of like I was debating. Um, I hate Harris. your picks. I hate okay, them. That's fine. That's fine. You wow. can hate my picks. Like I, uh, Lamar you're, Jackson was you're too early, just but... going with recency bias and no. like they've had a great career. No, you're Aaron the one who's going on recency and... bias, putting C.J. Stroud as high as you did after one season. I mean, that's perhaps, recency bias. Perhaps, I'm going with people like, like Aaron Rodgers. It's hard as a rookie to take that like kind of terrible receiver core and like the Texans had absolutely no expectations whatsoever right so that's kind of where i'm going with that look what one. rg3 did for washington his first year i don't uh, work after that well Not, yeah he kind of play destroyed his anything. Need, so i i guess my point being vince young when he started i'm not i'm not like vince wh- young wasn't even close to cj stroud <laughs> i'm not i'm not sold on someone just because they had one good rookie season when i didn't believe in them as a prospect coming out i need to see more sure and i and i can agree with that but like i think it's really just you have the top tier quarterbacks at the top and then the the rest below that is pretty debatable yeah um but yeah i'll go 11 and i'm so if we're gonna go for potential i'm going caleb williams at number 11 okay well that yeah he hasn't thrown a single pass so he has in college so yeah, coming off a kind of iffy season at USC. Yeah. Like, they, I don't follow college college football too much, but um, I don't think they, yeah, they definitely didn't make the college football playoff. I mean, did you judge Andrew Luck by that standard? I mean. I, I don't care. I don't really care if he made the college football playoff or not, because USC's like, an up-and-coming program. Okay, they were so nothing. I, I Before Lincoln Riley went out there, it's not. Do you remember, because I, I don't, I wasn't really watching college football at yeah. the time, what was Stanford's record 
that year. Oh like gosh, no. I, okay, yeah. Because I know I'm. I can't. I know Andrew Luck passed the eye test. I, I think that USC finished seven and five, which if you're like a college team, that's pretty bad. Yep, and they so, did almost uh, let uh, Shooter or Sanders come back and win. Yep, yep. Yeah. So. I don't know how much of that was Caleb Williams. I I don't yeah. follow it too much, but I have kind of seen that the pick is all based on his potential and potentially being Mahomes. And I think the Bears are like, okay, we messed up Mahomes' pick. We have to pick the Mahomes clone <laughs> because we can't. We can't. <laughs> I think Caleb's going to be good, and we're going to look back at this I after his rookie year and be like, he's at 11, really? I, okay, I could see him definitely getting them close to the playoffs, and that's a lot because of the talent they've put around him. I think the Bears have done a really good job kind of breaking down the team and rebuilding it back up Um, because, I mean, they've got some offensive weapons there. DeAndre Swift is definitely overpaid. I think that that was a silly signing, but whatever. Yeah. We're going to – we'll go through 17 um, today. And Uh, that was 11? That was 11, yep. So I'm up next and – No, you just picked Kayla Williams. Oh, I just picked – oh, you're you're at 12 and I'm 13. Okay, so this is an incredibly small sample size, but I – I love the player. Gardner Minshew. No, here he comes. No, not Gardner, Gardner Minshew. Clint Anthony Richardson up there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, I really liked what I saw from him yeah. in those first couple of games. Now, I do have to say that if he doesn't learn how to protect himself, he's got to be towards the bottom because he's just never playing. But, I mean, his play style is similar to, like, Josh Allen, Cam Newton, like... It gets you wins. So as long as he can learn to protect himself, I That's think. That's a big if, though. It, it, it is a big if. Clobbered. Well, yeah, clobbered, and he got, like, knocked out of every game that he played in. Right, right. So, yes, I know that that's a bit of a stretch, that one, but if I'm drafting quarterbacks for the future, I would take a sh- shot on Anthony Richardson here. Hey, I, I don't hate it. I mean, you know, I'm a big fan of the guy, too. Yeah. So. Um, I think here I'm going to go for a leadership pick, and this is where I go Jalen Hurts. Okay. Um, That would put him at 13. That puts him at 13, yeah. That's probably harsher than most people would put Jalen Hurts right now. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of people were putting him in like a, before this year like in the top five. Yeah, they, so. and I, I didn't agree with the top five, but I had him top ten. And top I'm moving, ten, I'm yeah. moving him slightly down. I, I would put, If I was ranking top to bottom, I'd probably have him around 11 or 12, Okay, I think. Uh, but he falls 13 here. And um, the... I believe in the leadership pedigree that he has, and that's driving a lot of this. Um, I think Jalen Hurts knows how to get the most out of the talent that he has and knows how to motivate everybody around him. So what about that terrible skit at the end of the season last year where they were 10-1? and, and I think their coach lost the locker room. Okay. That's, like, that yeah. That playoff game against the Bucks was the terrible. Eagles did not yeah. try. And that's that, why that you saw lack of effort. Yeah, like, they were checked out. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's just like as a professional NFL team, yeah. how can you be checked out yeah. in a wild card playoff game? Like I saw like the Bucks were underdogs in that game and I'm like they're going to win. Like this is so like they're going to win. So that it, it, I wonder what the Eagles are going to do this season because yeah. they could they could bounce back in a big way. They were dominating most of the year last year. Yeah. So, uh, that gets us to fourteen. You've so got two I more think, picks today. Yeah, so. I think I'm going to put Jared Goff here. All right, that's about time. Yeah, for Goff. yeah. I was between Goff and Hurts on my last yeah, one. Yeah. So yep. Jared Goff for me, I think. So I when he got traded to the Lions, I had no faith in Jared Goff whatsoever. It's like, oh, they're just throwing a piece into this trade because they're like, well, we gave away our quarterback. Let's try to get a quarterback in return. And, I mean, Sean McVay just wasn't working with Jared Goff. And he's just like, okay, fine. I'll just throw him into the package here. And that and that's what it felt like. Salary dump. It was a salary yeah. dump. They yeah. overpaid for Goff. Yeah, that's right, yeah, because they gave him that McVay's contract. McVay's like, too. I got to upgrade here. So, yep. Yeah. Yes, but, I mean, to his credit, in Dan Campbell's system, the first year wasn't great, but these last two ones, they got talent around him, and I think that he is performing at the above-average uh, NFL quarterback standard. So, Yeah. Well, that's that's 
right, right around where I've got Goff. Right now, I'm kind of between Kyler and Tua. Yeah. Or Dak. Um, right. It's like, where do you put them? Yeah, I'm going like, Kyler for the upside in the athletic system. That's, that's so probably Kyler what Murray I would comes do too. in. Kyler comes in for me at number 14, former number one overall pick. Um, we were talking actually before we started recording here just about the the baseball pedigree and how that's become you know a lot more integrated too. So um, that's something that Kyler Murray brings to the table. Yeah. And maybe yeah. Anthony Le- Richardson could learn how to slide yeah. from Kyler Murray. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kyler Murray or <laughs> Russell Wilson. Yep. Right. So uh, Kyler has gotten the Cardinals off to big starts before too. So yeah. I think a coaching change is going to be good for him, and he'll be in the top half of quarterbacks this year. Okay. Cool. As long as he stays healthy, yeah. Who's coming in at 15? So I think I was kind of right where you were, too, because I was juggling, like, Dak and uh, Tua. I, and I yeah. think I do put Tua here. Okay. Um, I know, like, he was the passing leader last year, but I do feel <laughs> like a lot of that was the talent around him. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of questions as to whether or not he's going to pan out. But, I mean, I think he's at le- you can at least give him credit that he's fit in a system with talent around him. Yeah. And he's okay. young and can maybe get better and whatnot. Um, so I would probably put him here. Like, it, I, you could almost argue he's had – I'm trying to think. No, he was injured in that season, so you – My my thing with Tua is he, he – hasn't, He hasn't won a playoff game, so. Yeah, and – I think he led the league in passing yards, but he'd have way more if Tyreek Hill didn't have to run 10 yards backwards to right. catch the underthrown no, no, no. ball it's to true. catch it and then run some more. Yeah. Like, it's it's bad. He's got to get more power on his throws. Right. If he can find a way to do that, that would open a lot of doors for them. Yeah. So. Uh, this is right where Dak Prescott yeah. is, right? Yep. So people have that Dak in the top 10. I have him right in the middle, right in the middle of the back. And I think he is right in the middle. Yep, so he comes in at 17 for me. Well, and I mean, you've seen, like, when you take CeeDee Lamb out of the equation, Dak does not lead the Cowboys to victories. Yeah, Dak doesn't make mistakes, and he's dependable, and he can't win you a big game. Right. Now, in a way, though, that makes him... Sort of the perfect quarterback for the Cowboys because they're in the mix every year. They're yep. competitive every year. They sell always a lot perform, of tickets. Always so, perform well in the regular season. A lot of hype. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is the year of the Cowboys. This is the year of the Cowboys. And they don't get past the division. Right. So it's there's hype every year. And, you know, the Cowboys fans are going, but they're going nowhere with Dak. And the biggest mistake that the Cowboys made when Lamar Jackson's out there at the mm-hmm. franchise tag, give up the draft picks and get him. Get Lamar. Yeah. If the Cowboys put Lamar Jackson on that team, you sell way more tickets and you win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Instead, nope, we just well, and it's, dawdle it's, with Dak and like bring we him were, back. Now they're going to overpay for Dak, too. Yeah. And like we were talking about, like a lot, the AFC quarterbacks are so much better than the NFC quarterbacks. If you get Lamar Jackson there, like it's not a far stretch to say, hey, yeah, you could be going to the Super Bowl with that. So. Um, but yeah, I would say at this point, my next pick would, I think this is probably the perfect spot for Kirk Cousins. Would be 18. Would be 18. Yeah. Great. So we will kick off with Kirk Cousins when we start next week as we go through the rest of the quarterbacks. And I already know who, if he's taking Kirk Cousins at 18, I know who I'm taking at 19. And it's going to surprise you. Make sure to check out our pod next week to see who's coming off the board at 19 and how we round out the rest of our picks, including the bonus who are the top backups in the league. We'll see you next week. Thanks for checking out the first ever Breaking the Plane podcast, and we'll see you next time. Bye.